Ah, ahoy! So at some point when collecting video games, you'll find yourself having moments where you just want to sit back and admire the way your collection is turning out. And that's where I find myself today. I want to talk about all the ways I spent money on garbage. Oh, and Jonathan Valencia? I'm finally doing it! So growing up, I watched a lot of video game reviewers who had these walls of video games, and I always wanted that. My parents never really wanted to buy me shelves, so my initial way of having a collection was a massive drawer, which was definitely cool because it always felt like opening a treasure chest. Eventually, my fondness for video games subsided, but returned in the year of our Lord 2020, and my itch of collecting video games had returned. One purchase of Legendary Fishing, and boom, here we are again. It was this year where I finally got what I wanted, which was a shelf. It was a small shitty shelf, but hey, it served its purpose. It was only able to hold 11 games in each row, so part of my collecting for the consoles I had at the time was limiting myself to only be able to hold 11 games per console. But when the Wii shelf was up to 10 games and I couldn't decide between Kirby's Epic Yarn and Metroid Prime 3, the logical solution was an expansion. I ended up buying a slightly bigger shelf, but that filled up quickly and I resorted to getting a second one. Eventually I invested in a big boy shelf once my collection got big enough, and some living room shenanigans later the shelf got moved into this corner with the original two smaller shelves getting reintroduced into the picture to create what my collection is today. So let's dive into what we got going on here. My collection is divided into territories, and considering that I'm a huge Nintendo fanboy, let's jump into that part first and see what interesting things we can find. So the Wii is a console that I have the most games for, getting about 3 full sections worth of games with a 4th section needing to be opened up inevitably because Zumba 2 and Zack and Wiki are getting a bit uncomfortable. Now I like buying games individually, making them all feel special. I don't buy bundles cause that way you start to forget what games you own, but the Wii is where I cheat sometimes and buy bundles cause come on, how can I not? I wanted a boy in this blob but for 10 extra dollars I also got a bunch of other shitty games that aren't worth much. 2 Tiger Woods games, 2 fishing games, and 2 hunting games. These aren't games I'd normally get, but hell, why not? I always liked the white spines that Wii games have, but I never minded too much when companies did their own fun thing like New Super Mario Bros Wii and Star Wars Clone Wars Lightsaber Duel Wars. Sometimes I do get unintentional fun designs. When buying used games on eBay, I'm at the mercy of sellers when they tell me that the games are in good condition. Sometimes it's rough, but sometimes it works. Like Rock Band I had something happen to it that darkened the spine and a bit of the artwork on the back, but I don't mind because it gives it a metal vibe. Same thing with Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop. Looks like the previous owner used this thing as a coaster for coffee, but hey, it kinda gives the game a fun decaying look. Which with zombies, I don't mind at all. Now for Wii Sports, I did make this little makeshift box so that it sits comfortably on the shelf rather than being smudged in its sleeve, which I do keep in the box by the way. Now I know Nintendo did release an official box version of Wii Sports as part of Nintendo Selects, but I don't know if I wanna be silly enough to spend $30 on a box version of a game that's free. There is a reason I look down on people who own physical versions of Fortnite. I don't know, if this channel ever hits 500 subs, I'll buy myself the Nintendo Selects version so you guys get to dictate this part of the collection. Moving up, we have the Switch portion. I keep it at the top of the shelf so that it's geographically closer to the Pro Bass and Cabela's boxes along with all the Amiibos. Now all my games are listed alphabetically, though I am having some rowdy customers here in terms of series. Jumping to the PS4 for a second, I like keeping game franchises together. And games that just continue numerically make my life easy, but with games like Rise of the Tomb Raider and its sequel Shadow of the Tomb Raider that start with two different letters, meant I had to separate them. Thankfully, since R and S come right after another, these two managed to stay together until I purchased Shadow of the Colossus and I don't know what to do now! Now why am I mentioning this? Back to the Switch games, Pokemon. See, Pokemon is a big point of shame I have as a gamer. I never played or dedicated myself to playing a Pokemon game. Though I have had stints with Pokemon Snap on the 64, but that's an unacceptable answer. I just never got into it or cared to get into it. But that changed this year because I finally sat down and played through and finished my first Pokemon game on the Switch and it was Shining Pearl. I also own Brilliant Diamond so I was able to trade my Pokemon and really do a solid number on my Pokedex. It was a long and fun time. I finally get Pokemon and I'm excited to play more of them in the future. Though they do come out way too frequently for my liking and the Switch has 8 of these oh Jesus, I'm never going to catch up. But anyway, putting them on my shelf was easy, especially when I just own Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I do have new Pokemon Snap, but that's hanging out with the ends. The peas I kept the two same slash not same games together, which was great and I knew was going to be impossible once I got the rest of these. However, the ice was broken recently with my purchase of Pokemon Legends Arceus and I had to do it. This life lesson of between BS there's always an L helped me come to terms with the fact that not every series of my collection is gonna stay together. 
But what else we got fun here in the Switch games? I have two copies of Animal Crossing New Horizons so that me and my girlfriend could play together during the year of Dr. Mario not working, and I don't know the last time these were touched. Now when I first got my Switch, the first three games I owned were all digital. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was bundled in, and Super Mario Party and Smash Bros Ultimate were digital gifts. But me, wanting some form of physical representation of these games in my collection, I elected to get empty boxes for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Super Smash Bros Ultimate. I haven't done so yet for Super Mario Party because... reasons? Ha! <laughs> I hate this game. I don't know, maybe if this channel hits 600 subscribers, I'll get the box for Super Mario Party. But other than that, the amount of games I hope to own for the Switch is going to make spacing a huge issue in the near future. But thankfully the small size of these boxes gives me a decent amount of time before I have to start worrying about it. Moving to the right corner is the GameCube section. Now anytime I share with people the fact that I collect video games, a question I get asked sometimes is what is the rarest or most valuable game I own? Now usually they are non-gamers expecting to hear an answer like an Atari game or even something from the Magnavox Odyssey. I assume that's because anytime I say it's a GameCube game, they usually have a flaccid reaction. But anyway, anyone who's collecting video games these days knows how much of a pain it is collecting GameCube games. Cause these things are expensive for some reason. These things cost just as much as new games and sometimes even more. I own all four Mario Parties for this system, and even those came at the cost of some electricity less months. Seriously, a lot of these games have a cost that exceeds a Benjamin, so it's reached a point that anytime I add to the GameCube collection, it's a day worth celebrating. Some games like Metro Prime 2, Echoes, Simpsons Hit and Run, Wind Waker, WarioWare, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door are purchases that stick with you. If I ever come home to see my house on fire, I'm running in and saving this whole row before I even try finding my girlfriend. The GameCube does currently house my most cost heavy game which is Chibi Robo, but I do have some future major splurges planned ahead. But yeah, the GameCube section is probably my favorite to collect for, but its cost has led to me adopting a mindset of if I ever see a game worth less than $30, I don't care if I'm starving, I'm buying it. The GameCube shelf does also house the biggest steal since I started collecting. Mega Man X Collection. I found this at a library for $2. That's amazing! Moving to the DS section here, starting on the very left we have this box that houses over 400 games in one little cartridge. Now this isn't here for playing purposes, it's more of a memento to how I used to play DS games as a child. My dad's business associate got me one of these that I ended up losing when I let a friend borrow it. He supposedly returned it to me with the label peeled off, but when I got home to test it out, it ended up just being Smackdown vs Raw. I never saw that kid again. This isn't the exact one, but again, it's just a memento. Plus, 400 games may sound great, but really it's only like 20 good games and 380 shovelware titles. But my actual DS games are where the fun is. Here I have a European version of Avatar The Burning Earth, a game I loved playing back then. While I wish I had the US version, I do like having a European version for collector's sake to see how different and fatter it is. Now it appears that I have two copies of Brain Age 2. Well actually, one of these houses the first Brain Age. How did this happen? I have no idea. But now I need to order a Brain Age 1 box to keep things right. It's on my eventual list of things to do. Actually, I have a running theme in this video. <clears throat> if this channel ever hits 700 subs, I'll buy a Brain Age 1 box. Anything else interesting here? Kung Zhu I bought for $2 while the New York Times crossword cost me $24. Imagine is a series I plan on getting all the games for because not only are they cheap, but also they were the sh** back in the day. Something else that's fun is that the WarioWare Touch Box glows under blue light. You know my copy of Super Princess Peach also glows under blue light. It also sticks to my hand. The DS does also have some quite the pricey games. Zelda Spirit Tracks cost me $80, while games like Metroid Prime Pinball cost almost $100, Jesus why? Here on the bottom shelf I keep both the DS's I own. One is my broken down DS I got off eBay and the other is my girlfriend's old DSi in a DS case, which is pretty fun. Continuing to move down we reach this sad little shelf which is my Game Boy shelf. This shelf is a bit of a mess. I have Mario Kart Super Circuit here in its original box in really good shape, which is insane considering I didn't splurge on this. And then we have a bunch of Game Boy games just randomly scattered. Now, my lack of attention to detail with this shelf isn't due to a lack of interest in Game Boy games. It's more like I don't know what to do in a sense of displaying them properly. 
I got lucky with Mario Kart, but trying to find the boxes for every Game Boy game is a hard task because those things weren't as salvaged as DS game boxes were. I've thought about just ordering a bunch of blank DS boxes and making my own labels because DS boxes did have Game Boy Advance game holders. That might be the route I end up going, but that doesn't solve my issue with original Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. I could buy replacement cases people make on Etsy, but that leaves me at the mercy of Etsy to have someone making boxes for every Game Boy slash Color slash Advance game I want. Kurukurukurin, I am not confident has a box somewhere. In the meantime, it's just a minefield here. Something fun is the Game Boy video cartridge that houses a bunch of Spongebob episodes, and I just think it's so funny. I'd call this stupid, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't catch myself testing it and watching every Spongebob episode on this thing. Now I do have two Game Boy Advance SPs here. One is mine, and the other is Master of Quacks. I'm trying to gather four of these so I can get a Game Boy to GameCube adapters and get the full experience of Four Swords Adventure. Again, this shelf is the least worked on and it's absolutely a work in progress. The Nintendo 64 shelf. Now annoyingly, 64 games didn't have side labels, making it hard to tell what these games were. But then I saw how Scott the Waz had labels from Etsy placed on his cartridges and it gave me an idea. Instead of purchasing 64 labels, I actually went and made my own on Microsoft PowerPoint, printed them out, cut them, and attached them myself. It created a very fun personal touch, which is why this shelf is another one that it's near and dear to me. But besides that, anything fun? Well, I got the 64 I own now back in 2019 when my uncle bought a storage unit that had it along with a bunch of games and he just gave them to me. Three of these games came in their original box, which I keep separately over here. Ocarina of Time, Conker's Bad Fur Day, and Hybrid Heaven. It is so cool to me that I have these, and I'm so thankful to this day that some poor sap didn't pay his storage unit fees. As much as I love the Nintendo 64, I don't have much fun stories with any games, but this shelf does house my favorite video game of all time, so it gets bonus points. Here we transition to the Super Nintendo shelf. I just got this console recently and have been rushing to collect some of the games I want for this thing. There's nothing too interesting here, but Super Nintendo is the first console I ever owned and finally having an SNES portion of my collection really means a lot. I do have this Mortal Kombat 2 box from Etsy that I only had because I needed it for my video on Mortal Kombat 2, but I'm happy to have it because I do want to have at least one box for an SNES game for collecting's sake. You know, funny story about Mario Paint is that the first few years of owning it, I didn't know you needed an SNES mouse. I got the game without it, so I always wondered why my controller didn't do anything, so my childhood consisted of me just watching the Mario animation and gameplay videos the game would show. There is a lot of work that still needs to be done with my SNES collection. I'm still missing key titles like Super Metroid, Link to the Past, and Super Mario All-Stars. You know, while filming this video, I got myself Doom on the Super Nintendo! Now this isn't the definitive way to play Doom, but I like this because of A, the red cartridge, but B, because on the back of it you'll see an old blockbuster video stamp, and I don't know, this just feels so cool and retro, I like having this. Now my NES collection is another sentimental shelf, which is weird because I never owned an NES until a few months ago. But growing up, I saw guys like AVGN and Iron Gamer who had giant shelves of these games, and now that I finally have my own feels super surreal. My collecting for this console has just started and can't wait to see how ludicrously big it gets because there's a lot of games to own for this thing. Something else that is shocking to me is like Super Circuit, I somehow found Tetris in its original box at a very good price. But I love this shelf, I love how cartridges have these little gaps to make them easier to grab out of the shelf and out of the console. The NES is going to definitely cause me annoyance in terms of space with all the games I want to own for it. It's eventually it's going to move downward and evict the residents of this section which at the moment is the jewel case games I own. I'm thinking I'm just gonna buy a third small shitty shelf and move it over here and have it be dedicated to NES and SNES games and free up loads more space for other games. Spatial management! It is the best and worst part of game collecting. The bottom of this row houses PC games and PS1 games. Now I'm not a PC gamer, I'm a delinquent now, but back in my early days I did have a PC and that's where some of these games came from. Also, Master of Quack recently found a lot of PC games in the street and just gave them to me. While these are useless now, I'm sure in the future I'll make some use of them. Some of them are in Russian, which makes me wonder if I gotta worry about the FBI knocking on my door. We also have some PlayStation 1 games here, which are fun. I'm not too crazy about the PS1, but there are games I want to own for it and there is a spot waiting for them in the future. Now this shelf also does hold a bunch of blank DVD cases. 
This is because this big shelf I have has its edges burying the end games. Now this would be an opportunity to kind of hide games I'm not too proud of owning, but then I realized no, I'm the proud owner of Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball and I will display it accordingly. So these are just here to negate this annoying thing that my shelf has. And you know, while I'm on the topic of PC games, I might as well hop over here where the rest of my PC games are. These are the games that come in boxes, like Battlefield 2 and all my copies of Doom 3. Two of them are Mac versions, which really helps my collection feel unique. I'm not a big PC gamer, and I don't see myself becoming one anytime soon, but I am interested in getting one PC game, and that is Grand Theft Auto V. Why, you may ask? Because when that game came out, it came with 9 discs of installation, which is just ludicrous to me, and for that reason alone, is why I want to own it. Maybe if this channel ever hits 800 subs. Anyway, time to move on to the Xbox side of things, and let's start here with my Xbox One slash Series X shelf. Why are the two combined, you might ask? Cause f*** Microsoft. So the Xbox One library is perfectly fine. Actually, the reason I lose my mind is over the inconsistency of the Series X boxes. So I've complained about these things before, but let's do it again, why not? If there's one thing I like in my shelf, it's uniformity, and the Series X doesn't know what the f*** that means. So at first we pretty much had the Xbox One boxes with one taken off the header, a removable stick with Series X on the right corner, and the spine also removed one while taking the green out of the Xbox logo. But after the Series X release, Xbox One game covers started featuring this tab here showing that the disc is playable on both consoles, and they removed the green from the Xbox spine circle. Give a shit! And then for some Xbox One games, they took out the one on the spine. Give a shit! Eventually, Microsoft changed its cover design and created this side tab that looks like your game cover just got a notification, and put Series X on the right corner. The spine stayed the same, but now it's stretched to the very end. But you see, NHL 23 spine had this random green rectangle put here, and gosh, this just pisses me off! See, I may sound like I'm bitching for no reason, but when you put these games together, it looks so disorganized to me. So I decided, f*** it, just put them together and not think about it. Though as my Series X collection grows, I may end up splitting the two consoles up again when the lack of uniformity becomes harder to see. Hopefully. Anything fun here? I have the Halo Infinite Collector Steelbook Edition that I could use to try to defend the house in case of home invasion. <laughs> Titan Quest is a game I bought at the library for $2. And Doom 3 BFG Edition has this one weird header where it says Xbox 360 and Xbox One and it just holds the Doom 3 BFG 360 disc. Ah, f***ing Microsoft. The 360 is behind the Wii with my most supported console. All the games I own on this thing is nuts. My plan with the 360 does include to finally start collecting Kinect games, but that's not gonna happen anytime soon. But the 360 is the shelf that taught me a valuable lesson on my game collecting, and it's the fact that it'll never end. I keep a list of games I want to own for each console as a method of staying organized, and the 360 list is a list I've completed twice, and it still isn't finished. It's because when I reach a point where I think I'm satisfied with the games I own, I either do some random web searches, or just remember a game out of nowhere. Percy Jackson's King Kong! So yes, the best part about game collecting is that it'll never end. Oh god. Back in high school, some kid just gave me Battlefield 4 for no reason. This thing is a wild package, as it included only the first disc for Battlefield 4, the install disc for Advanced Warfare, and some blank DVD that I don't know what's on and am too terrified to find out. I guess the play disc is something I need to get soon. Maybe this channel ever hits 900! Oh wait, I forgot that the 360 shelf has a hall of shame. These three games, GTA 4, Sonic Generations, and Left 4 Dead 2, are in the hall of shame because of more of Microsoft's bullshit. Inconsistency. So I've learned to accept re-releases being in my shelf. It was inevitable, and if anything, part of gaming history. I've learned to embrace Nintendo Selects, Player's Choice, Greatest Hits, and PlayStation Hits. But I refuse to embrace Microsoft's version because it just won't choose a f***ing format! So Grand Theft Auto 4 has a solid grey label on top, and the whole box is greyed out too. The label says greatness is earned. No, it's not. And the end label unnecessarily stretches out almost halfway through the goddamn spine. But you see, the Sonic Generations and Left 4 Dead 2 went for a lighter grey design and the box is back to being green, which honestly is fine, but the spine bothers me again. Sonic Generations just puts its logo on the spine, which is great, but for some reason Left 4 Dead 2 used generic font, which makes the game look cheap. Again, I'm probably just bitching for the sake of bitching, but I don't like the way these looks mixed in with the other games. So I put them off to the side. 
Titanfall is a game I own because I went to five below and it cost me five dollars because this thing is literally useless right now. A multiplayer only game and the 360 servers are shut down. I hope having a corpse doesn't stink up the place. Something else I like in the 360 shelf is this bundle of Lego Indiana Jones and Kung Fu Panda. I love how on one side it's one game cover and on the other side it's the others. Shifting over to the original Xbox side of things, the fact that I'm collecting these games even though I can't play most of these is fascinating to me. With both limited backwards compatibility and the fact that my new 360S refuses to play original Xbox games, reduce me to just collecting these games until I go and get an original Xbox. Oh, let's hope for a K. I miss the window where collecting original Xbox games are super cheap and easy. I have noticed the prices on these games have slightly increased. I'm not saying these games are worth gold, but I am saying that I could have easily had this thing be much bigger had I started much earlier. I still wouldn't be able to play most of these games anyway. Now the bottom row of my shelf features my movie collection. Now before I got back into collecting video games, I was really into collecting movie DVDs, but then that got completely pushed aside by my game collecting. How pushed back is it? Well, it's only here because I'm just filling out space until I need to clear space. And when the space needs clearing, I send my movies into the dreaded NEGATIVE SPACE. This gap here between the two shelves is where I tuck and store my movie DVDs that I don't see myself watching anytime soon. As the collection grows, a movie will have to bite a bullet as the games expand. If I buy more shelves, I will display the movies once again, but in the meantime, they are my neglected child. Also, for some reason, I have a Wii U game down here too. This is the one and only Wii U game I own. Now, keep in mind, I don't own a Wii U, I haven't lost my mind yet, but I got this when I ordered a bundle of Wii games and for some reason, this was in there. But it does suddenly got me in the mood to start collecting Wii U games, because I do intend on one day losing my mind and owning a Wii U, so I might as well have a small library of games for it ready. Oh, and at the bottom right of this big shelf, the DK bongos have some space. Don't ask me why, I can't tell you. I guess it's just kind of keeping the spot warm for when the Xbox shelf inevitably needs another section. Moving on to this side of the shelf, we have the PlayStation section. Up here we have the PS2 games. Now I feel like the one person on the planet who didn't grow up with a PlayStation 2, and as much as I loved having the GameCube, I still felt like I missed out. I try to make up for lost time by playing a lot more on the PS2, but the thing is, whenever I try to play on it, I get this screen. I've been collecting video games for a few years now, and I gotta say, the PS2 is the only console that gives me issues with used games. See, initially, I thought PS2 owners all must have collectively agreed to use the disc to swat at flies, because that's the only way it makes sense why it seems like none of these games want to work. But then I've noticed the PS2 sometimes doesn't want to play games that I know I've played on it before. Can I please play High School Musical? Nah, I don't really feel like it. I really want to get more into the PlayStation 2, but it seems like my PlayStation 2's primary goal is to fight against that. Oh well, do I have any interesting games here? So we know those stores like Rite Aid that sells a bunch of movie DVDs and how sometimes you will see one game in there that never gets bought because it's a bad game. Plus, it's a bit of an unspoken rule to never buy that game. Well, I broke that rule one day when I was at Rite Aid and for $25 purchased Puzzle Challenge Crosswords. I could have bought it on eBay for five. I do have WWE Shut Your Mouth here twice, but one of them is actually SmackDown vs Raw. One silly part of the shelf is the PlayStation 3. It starts here and it continues down here. How the hell am I doing this? I'm not too crazy at the moment about PS3 games. If there's a multi-platform game, I'm more likely to own it on the 360, so I'm only hunting the exclusives here. You know, the PlayStation 4 is a console I just need to embrace. It's probably one of my favorite consoles of all time. Not only because a third of my old look videos have been on this thing, but it's also because I've had a lot more fun experiences on this thing that I care to admit. Why am I negative, one could ask? Because I hate how games are these days, and the PS4 just happens to be my punching bag. So before you ask, I'll answer. I grew up in a time where if you wanted to play a game, all you had to do is put it in and play it. These days, getting the itch to play something sucks because now you gotta wait for the console to download the game, which could take a while. Oh, oh, but then there's updates and then the whole issue of storage space becomes apparent and God forbid you throw a Call of Duty in there and then, oh Jesus, forget about it. But let's play a scenario in our head. The girlfriend's out of town, so you invite the boys over and one of them goes, Holy shit, you got Slime Rancher? Yeah, you wanna play? Sure. 
But now it has to install, everyone has to wait, and you can't play something else on the PS4 because you can't take Slime Rancher out, so now everyone looks at each other's eyes, asks now what, that one friend makes a joke about having a circle jerk, everyone laughs, but then it gets real quiet, everyone looks at each other's eyes, someone does a shoulder shrug, you know, we had a few beers and the moment just feels right, and then we all, oh, what the fuck am I talking about? I hate the PS4. So what's fun in here? Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 is just a box, and if you know why, I love you. Thanks for sticking around. Elder Scrolls Online was another game I bought at 5 Below, which was odd. I think this game is still popular. I do have a proper box for Injustice 2 because before the game came in the shitty GameStop box and before that I had this crappy cover made for it. Now I do also own Fortnite, but the thing with having a physical copy of Fortnite is that usually it's a blank box that comes with a download code for some kind of DLC or season pass. I own this Anime Legends box only because I want some kind of physical representation of Fortnite. But here's the thing, I don't care about Fortnite, I don't care about anime, so you know what? Here! First come, first serve. Consider this this channel's first giveaway. You know, the PS4 actually snuck up on me. I bought a bunch of PS4 games this past Prime Day, on top of the fact that my coker sold me a bunch of his old PS4 games, has led to the PS4 to tie my Wii in amount of games I own for the platform at a juicy 82. That's impressive. Now, for a brief period of one week, I collected music CDs. They sit and occupy this shelf for the time being until my NES shelf expands into the PC and PS1 shelf, and then my PS1 games will move into this shelf to bring the PlayStation consoles all together. I have this Lodgenet 64 controller sitting here, which I hope to make a video on before the end of summer. And underneath it I store all the Nintendo 64 labels I have yet to use. To the right here I keep my New York Rangers paraphernalia. Now I'm a New Yorker, I'm a big Rangers fan, and if it sounds like I'm bragging, trust me I'm not, it's a f***ing curse I'll tell ya! But yeah, I keep it here for now. Might have to move it soon considering that if we jump back over here, I forgot to mention my leftover PS4 games and my PS5 games. Yes, we here at Soblift Productions are now owners of a PlayStation 5, and the first game I played on it was Stray. Like the PS1, the PS5 is probably going to be hopping over real soon. We reached this shelf down here where I kept the Nintendo 64, SNES, and NES boxes, but I already talked about those, so let's move on. We've reached the bottom two shelves, and the left one houses my comic books. I'm not the biggest comic book guy, but I am a big fan of the Walking Dead graphic novels, so I do keep the four Competentians I have here, along with the Mortal Kombat comic books. And the bottom right is just those PC games I talked about, and a bunch of miscellaneous DVDs like Family Movies. And that is the tour of my shelves. I was originally going to talk about what's going on up top, but there's a lot of stuff up there, and I might just save that for another video. But this is the kind of video I've been wanting to do for a while, because it's amazing to me how much my collection's changed in the last three years, and I'm excited to see how much it changes in the next three years. Because it's fascinating how your approach to collecting video games changes, and what new things you'll find yourself adding. Personally, I can't wait to expand the platforms I collect for. Maybe some of Sega's catalog from the Dreamcast and the Genesis. Or I might even go retro with the Atari, the ColecoVision, or fuck it, even the Magnavox Odyssey. Hell, in the next three years, I might even go and lose my mind and get a Wii U! Personally, the biggest step I hope to take in the next few years is towards PC gaming. And as much of a hardcore console gamer I am, I do see the benefits of gaming on a computer. And plus, I can finally play some of these PC games Master Quack got me, like Crusaders of Might and Magic, Beyond Good and Evil, and Yanni's Nagakatas Gazette.